Let's read John 8. We read from verse 24 because of time. It says, That is why I told you that you will die unforgiven and condemned in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sins. Read until 30. Okay. 25. So they said to him, Who are you anyway? Jesus replied, What have I been saying to you from the beginning? I have many things to say and judge concerning you. But he who sent me is true, and I say to the world only the things that I have heard from him. They did not realize or have the spiritual insight to understand that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man on the cross, you will know then without any doubt that I am he and that I do nothing on my own authority. But I say these things just as my father taught me. And he who sent me is always with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what I please him. As he said these things, many believed in him. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This Sunday must help us must help us in our devotion. Maybe we can write a restoration of your devotion to God. We are going when you look at your devotion, I, can you say you are working with God? Can you say you are doing one thing with God? Devotion demands your loyalty and your love. In other words, if you are loyal, you are devoted. You are going to meet some things that will check your loyalty. And your love. Let's look at the devotion of our Lord Jesus Christ. They came to him and say, who are you anyway? Tell us, who are you? He says, I've been telling you. I've been telling you. When we read, he said, what I've been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to judge. Concerning you. Kali na. But he who sent me Mara ola na. is true. Kwa, kwa he began to explain to them about the one who sent him. When they say, Who are you? Habari, ah, na we na uma. He doesn't talk about himself. He talk about na the one who sent him. Because he is loyal to him. And the Bible says, Bible hape. they did not realize Basile or have the spiritual insight to understand that he was speaking about his father. They were not understanding that he is devoted to his father. They want to know him. But him, he wants to tell them by the father. 
He said, but when you lift up the Son of Man on the cross, you will know them that, that without any doubt that I'm he. Because it's a devotion to the Father that establishes your confidence. Your confidence will be more real because you where you get it. He said, when he was speaking about the father, he said, when you lift him, lift ha, me up. He said, when I die on the cross, it's then you will know who I am. As I'm living now, you will know. Otherwise, I won't talk about myself, but you will know the day I die. This man is not talking about his life. He's is saying it's only when I die. If you don't repent, you will die in your sins. Look here what he said about He it. said, when you lift up the Son of Man on the cross, you will know then without any that I'm He. And that I do nothing with my authority. I do nothing with my own authority. But I say this thing just as my father taught me. And he says, he who sent me is always with me. Devotion shows that you cannot be separated with the one you are devoted to. He who sent me is always with me. He who sent me is always with me. He has not left me alone. Listen, he says, because I always do what pleases him. There are things that our Lord Jesus does when other people are not there. I can call that a devotional work. He says those things I always do them, they please him. Because you cannot be devoted to your father without pleasing him. We cannot talk about devotion to the person that we don't please. You become devoted because you love. You are loyal. He said, my father has not left me because I do those things. The things that he does here we're not we're not mentioned here. I want to say something. When Jesus was among people, he preached to them and he healed the sick and he left and go and climb the mountain. When he's busy with his activities among the people, he is not talking about that. He is talking about the things that he does that please him which is not seen by people. When he comes out to heal people, those are the fruits of his devotion. Devotion establishes a relationship. In other words, you cannot be devoted unless you are related. You must check your devotion with him. Because most of the time we go to him because we are searching for something. Because we are searching for something. Now we look Go to him. Because we are 
Because we are devoted there are things to do. That other people cannot see. They are seeing the fruits when we pray for people. When we bless people. But there are things that were not mentioned. If truly we are having a devotion to him, we won't be fluctuating. We will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whether we are somewhere or not, our devotion won't change. That's what my friend. How is your devotion to God? So the Lord Jesus says, He who sent me, listen to, listen to this expression, this word. This is like a, you know, Pride. Telling people, you, know, you will send me. Oh, oh, to me has not left me. As on to In other words, you are lonely. Le me, no I she. still have him. You will send me. On I land to me has not left me. Here, on to when I, I read here, I found like Jesus here here was so proudful about his father. His relationship was so strong that when you speak about him, you can misunderstand. Maybe I was supposed to be saying, You know, church. Jesus is still working with me and he has not left me. But I feel like Jesus was saying, Hey! Who has sent me? He is still with me. Why? Because I always do what pleases him. Listen to that expression. When the preacher is preaching like that, it will be like a prideful stable. I'm always doing what pleases him. In other words, when I'm in my kitchen, I do things that pleases him. When I'm in my bedroom, I do things that pleases him. When I'm in my work, I please him. Always please him. Means there are times that looks like I won't please, but I please. So that is the reason why I'm what I am. That's what Jesus was saying. Hey, you know, I don't care what you do. Look at this scripture of John 10. Verse 27. We are looking at at the devotion of our Lord Jesus Christ. John 10 verse 27 to 30, it says what? The sheep that are my own hear my voice yes. and listen to me. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they will never ever by any means perish. And no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. Can you hear that expression? Can you hear that verse? I just want you to understand the way it has been said by our Lord Jesus. I feel the way the Lord Jesus we are so devoted has already affected how we talk. We talk with fear. We talk with doubt. We talk having fear of losing. Jesus says, no one will be able to snatch them from my hands. It's a devotional person who's not even afraid of losing anything. I have a property. No one can take it. Think about someone saying, I have this and nobody can take it. Jesus says, no one will snatch this people. Jesus was speaking here with a very strong words. Read, read those words again, Mama. Uh -huh. Verse 28. Yes. It says, And I give them eternal life, and they will never ever by any means perish. 
And no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. No one. I'm sure Lee Satan was listening. And not only Satan. I Satan Pharisees I Pharisees were there. The Pharisees were there. Do you know that Jesus, when he speaks the words of faith, he will speak them when other people are listening. There was a time he says, no one will eat the fruit from this tree. I'm beginning to understand that when you are devotion to God, how your words will never fall to the ground. You don't speak in an apologetic way. You understand that your statements brings results. The words you speak will come to us. Allow me to tell you that we are not so confident. Rina are it is happy. Why? Because we understand that our devotion is Rea not devotion. Somewhere, somewhere we are affected. We are distracted. We are distracted. In our devotion. And that is why we cannot speak the words of faith. So strong that I will give them eternal life. I will take that position. I will bless these people. We have not reached that level because our devotion is distracted. There are many things that are happening to our devotion. Sometimes we are busy with certain things that alter us and affect our faith. I don't know if you're hearing me. It is time now that we return back. We are, it's the time that we are restored back. You need restoration. Where you'll be so connected to the Him and speak as if it's Him speaking. No one can snatch them from my Father's hand. And I give them eternal life. We have not reached that level. I just want to show you something. That really make me to be challenged. Can you read from 36 to 38 on the same chapter? 36 to 38 chapter in Yenayo. Uh -huh. It says, If that is true, then do you say of him whom the father sanctified and set apart for himself and sent into the world, the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the son of God? If I do not do the works of my father, that is the miracles that only God could perform, then do not believe me. But if I say I, I am doing them, even if you do not believe me or have faith in me, at least believe the works that I do. Admit that they are the work of God. So that you may know and keep on knowing clearly without any doubt that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. That is, I am one with him. Ha! Ah, look at that, that uh, devotion. Now we understand that. When you are devoted How you have to feeling? something, you become one with it. It's a devotion that replaces you. Or replaces someone to be on the position of what you are devoted to. Jesus was saying, if you don't believe that I'm the one, the son of God, look at the works that I've done. It's only the father who can do them. If we talk about this as a pastor now, it's like you have got pride. 
Jesus never said that. Jesus said, I'm the only one. He said, Look at the works that I do. This is only what the Father can do. If, if you don't believe in me, believe in the works. That are coming from the Father. So, me. And the Father, I That's another thing. When you look at me, you are the Father. Jesus said this several times. Initially, he says, I do things that please him. Me and the Father, we are one. I have never heard Christ saying this. I have never heard Christ say, you see what? Me and the Father, we are one. Because our devotion is really distracted. There are many affairs that are happening to our lives. To extend that, we end up engaging them. They take us away from here. Here, you see Jesus, you see the Father. When, when, when Jesus died like this, he's the Father doing it. When he bent, he's the Father bent. Devotion is 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 the Thought he was devoted. Patron, na na na, Roy Khafil. If you remember, he thought he was devoted. Ah, leka opula butse, wo na na na, Roy Khafil. Maybe read John six years. Mutom ngare o Johanne sigis. Maybe we read from verse fifty nine. Johanne six, we read from fifty nine. Yes. Ere. He said these things in a synagogue while he was teaching in Capernaum. Uh -huh. When many of his disciples heard this, they said, this is a difficult and a harsh and offensive statement. Who can be expected to listen to it? But Jesus aware that his disciples were complaining about it asked them, does this cause you to stumble and take offense? What then will you think if you see the Son of Man ascending to the realm where he was before? Is it the Spirit who gives life? The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, providing eternal life. But still there are some of you who do not believe and have faith. For Jesus knew from the beginning who did not believe and who would betray him. Let's, let's stop there. We listen to that before we reach the story of Peter. This was a very painful statement. Again. The statement that Jesus knew who was a Christian, who was not a Christian. Jesus knew who was following him. Was following him. It's after Jesus preached. When he was talking about it, come and drink my blood. Many of the disciples left him. But the teaching only affected many people. 
They were so much affected that they say, no, this teaching is too hard. It comes to a point where the Bible says, Jesus he knew. knew everyone. He knew those who will be with me. That one is not going to be with me. Think about you live with people and you no, know no, their lives. But you cannot be affected with Mara them. Did you realize that when you greet people, you, more, you can pretend. Jesus, Jesus lived with them, he knew them all of them. them. But he could not affect his But now here, the Bible says, he has spoken these words because he understands some of the people who were there they didn't have faith. Sorry. Babu nchi babu Let's bring it to church today. Even if we preach Ravanel Pugwan. Yes, or what they were born about Tendaka and have attended. Yes, or can I see more when I Even if we can show that we have wisdom that is coming from God. But if it is known that there is nothing you can believe in, you will never believe. Even if we push you so that you can come to believe but the Lord Jesus know that you are not devoted until then. Uh, just think when we are trying to take you and put you into things that you don't care about. Just remember how Jesus tried to show Judas or money is not an issue here. He took the money and gave it to him. Sometimes God will show that these things does not matter and he gives them to, the, to you. Mara, is Judas. He was given money, but he was affected even though he was with money. Let me tell you. You have been given things. These things are just testing your devotion. When you have acquired all this, how do you live with others? Yes, sir. The person will never use it. People will cry for things that they will never be able to handle. But these things need your devotion when you want them. You are crying for things that need your devotion. Oh, yes, somebody crying, I want to be a prophet. Hey, prophets don't sleep. You love sleeping too much. You'll, you'll be demanded not to eat food, but because you love soup so much, it will be difficult. Then you cannot be given that kind of a gift. Because even though you can be given the gift, you will do things that doesn't make you to become what you are supposed to be. Even if you are given those things, Let's what take for instance, you are given the issue that you will become president. But because you love sleeping in your shakes, you will be ashamed when we wake up in a shack. President, president, you will <laughs> be ashamed and shocked. These things that makes you to become so that you can be something. It's so important, better than becoming something. Tell somebody that is close to you. What makes you to become something is much better than becoming something. 
For you to be cooked and you become peace. Are you hearing me? There are things that must be done to you here. Those things are better than being what or bad than being this thing. For you to be rich, there are things that are supposed to be, the things that must be done on you. I don't know if you are hearing me. Those things that you are busy doing declares you that you must become rich. The person that fights your position will never be able. Why? Because there are things that you do that place you in that same position. I don't know if you are understanding me. I was seeing something. My, my boy was showing me. I blew it. Eh? There is a pro program called I Blew It. Mututof was 10 million. Yo, oh. A person will be given millions. Or I invest in business. For the person to invest and make business. <laughs> the person go to a spot to drink. <laughs> to a shepin to drink. <laughs> and the money is going when, when the person is doing likewise. <laughs> now the person will have his <laughs> own group of dancing people so that because he always buys drinks. When the money <laughs> is finished, it's, not, it's no longer going back and tell them <laughs> the money is gone. He will run away or she will run away. <laughs> Why? Because he won't be able to tell <laughs> them the money is finished. <laughs> there is something that makes you to become something. Don't try to be something that you cannot be. Why? Because there is something that you can do that makes that one who well, makes you something. To, to decide you, you that you must be something so that you can then become something. So devotion, then we have It brings all the ingredients that makes you to be something. But don't cry to be something. Bring all the ingredients and bring them here and allow God to cook you to be something You are hearing what I'm saying. But there's no but the one who reborn has a degree but has a degree you know that you but you are not working. It's not a degree that makes you to work. It's not your degree. As the tongues do it it's not the tongues that, that makes you to be filled but, by the Spirit of the Lord. You will speak with tongues but, but, but and you will always just remain and you will even bite your tongue and, speak it, and nothing happens. Why? Because you are not filled with that thing called the Holy Spirit. Mm, are you hearing me? Let's carry on reading this. Mm -hmm. Then 65 says, and he was saying, this is the reason why I have told you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted him. That is, unless he is enabled to do so uh -huh. by the Father. Did you hear that? Amen. No one can come to him to me unless it is the Father who granted him. Jesus says, if you love me, in other words, be loyal. Do my commandments. So if you want to come to so me, it will be granted by the Father. The ability of you of doing what I say is not coming from you. You can be in church and and you still still fail. Fail. We can still preach to you and you still say amen and are failing. Because it has been granted. It must be granted. It must not come from you. You can come and dance with many people here and you go back and sin again. Dancing with others like this. Yeah. That song that we sing so much in church was blessings. More than that, it's a And he will say, There they are, oh God. And after that, you go and lie. And after that, you go jolling. And you come back again. She did. She did. 
But take them all go and again. you go back and do same. Why? Because this thing you must be given. There is something that you must do so that you become a Christian. Don't think that the works that you are doing will help you in any way. When you are not following what God wants you to follow. Let's go down with it. 66. As a result of this, many of his disciples abandoned him and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the 12 disciples, you do not want to live too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Can you hear the devotion of Peter? Here, we are beginning to hear the devotion of Peter here. Jesus said, no, listen. You can go away even if you prefer. Because the Lord here is not begging people to be devoted to him. Even you people can go. And Peter said, hey, where shall we go? You have the ways. 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 Petro. was not understanding that the ways he speaking Mancha will be challenged one day. Because sometimes we speak things here without devotion. And those ways when we are challenged we begin to surrender. Why? Peter was Petro. told uh, where shall we go? Jesus says, even you people, when I look at you, I'm still alone here. Remember when Jesus was supposed to be arrested that time? When those people came, everybody ran away. You remember that time? You remember? The same Peter one day, he said one day, I'm ready even to die with you. Even to go to prison. Look, look at the devotion of Peter before the test came. But when the test came, he denied Jesus like, I don't know him. I don't know this man. Whatever you believe in, without devotion, you may make it to stand. You won't make it to stand. The moment when you say, you know what, I love charis. I will never love charis. I will never leave charis. A challenge is coming. You know, I love this man. I will die with him. One day that man will clap you. When you start to look at the clap, from the angle where it comes, you say, I don't love this man anymore. Because remember you said what you said and you stood on your way. Allow me to tell you that God one people who stand on their ways, but you will be tested on what you say. The test is coming. I don't know if you're hearing me. But I'm happy about the Lord. He says, Peter, Peter, I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you. There are many people here. The Lord has prayed for you. So that whatever that has happened and affected your devotion, you will be restored back. I say you will be restored back. I see you coming back. I will come back. I will bounce back. We will need Christians. I understand. I went out of the way. But I can come back. I need Jesus again. I need to walk the way. He has taught me to walk. I need to do things the way. He want me to do. I want to please him. I need restoration. Acts chapter 2. Read from verse 14 to 16. Acts 2, 14 to 16. But Peter... Standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. 
men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem. Yes. Let this be explained to you. Listen closely and pay attention to what I have to say. These people are not drunk as you assume. Since it is only the third hour of the day, meaning nine o'clock, but this is the beginning of what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. Amen. Hallelujah. Now Peter Petro. has been restored back. Hey. And the Holy Spirit came. And people were speaking in tongues. Others were prophesying. Now Peter, Petro. who Betrayed. Who ran away. The one who had a devotional work. Which does not suit him to stay. This time he stood up. And say, hey, hey, this is according to the scripture. It is written in the book of Jewel. No one here is drunk. Peter was filled with the power. A man who had fear was restored. I don't know if you are hearing that. There is something that is happening to you here. God wants to restore you back. You want to have fear to stand your position. I don't know if you are hearing me. When the power of God comes, you will be restored. I see restoration of your devotion. He was no longer afraid of those who killed Jesus. He was no afraid of what will happen to him. He said, hey, 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 this is not what you see. He stood up because of the power of God. Now he is able to tell you that you are not alone. 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 That God is about to restore your devotion. You will do it like before. You will do it better. The Lord will never leave you. He will raise you up and make you to see things like before. And leave the way He wants you to live. If you are here, we shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, I feel like I'm preaching to myself. Because I feel I need that restoration. That burning inside my heart. That is the air you cannot sit here. Go and stand alone and speak with me. Because the devotion must be of you and God. Sometimes we are becoming devoted to the things that are affecting our friendship with him. Here we are talking about that will make you to do things that will please him Jesus said it now he's Peter he said hey I'm not afraid it is time to know for you to know that this is written from the scripture it is time that you do what is written from the scripture it looks stupid it looks like you are confused but it's God's plan. It's God's will. I see some people here. Restoration. It is your portion. What devil has stolen? And brought fear to you. I'm here to tell you. Today, it will be restored. It will be restored. It will be restored. It will be restored. In the name of Jesus. One time I was I was I even said this in church. I was facing a lot. There were Christians who were against me. 2018. 2018. Others wanted to destroy the church and start the church. I don't forget there's something even now. That I, 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 I
As a Lord, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. I say, I won't leave my relationship with God because of this situation. And then I told people, the the angel came. came. I don't forget that age. Who came and said, hey, don't look at what is happening. You're a candidate to heaven. The moment when you reach that level, where you know where you belong, you won't be distracted. Just say, hey, I cannot be distracted. I can see what is happening around you. But I know where I'm going. I understand where I'm going. We have got Christians here. Satan has been distracting you. He has distracted you. I'm here to tell you. From today, rejoice. Rejoice. Because what is important is not this distraction. This distraction is a test that says, are you fit for this place? Are you fit for this position? Are you fit to where you are going? Don't allow Satan to confuse you. Rejoice and tell yourself, hey, I'm going somewhere. I understand where I'm going. Let's read another scripture. How can we overcome this distraction? First John 2. John 2. If we know this verse 15 to 17, it can 15 to 17. John Chapter 2, 15 to 17. Yes. Do not love the world of sin that opposes God and his precepts. Nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the last and the sensual craving of the flesh and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. The world is passing away and with it, it's lust, the shameful pursuits, and ungodly longing. But the one who does the will of God and carries out his purpose lives forever. Let, let's demonstrate this scripture. Hallelujah. Let me get one brother here. If I, I wanted to call you because you, you face people here. Uh, tell me what you have in your pocket. I've got my cell phone and my car keys. Give me, give me them. Yes. 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 We know is there is a lot of things that connect with this cell phone. But all these things are connected to his heart. This car. Can you see the car? Yes. 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 Anything of this world because it connects with your because heart. I want your heart. So all these things here can affect your heart when you lose them. Do not love the world. Everything that is containing this world. When you start to have them, how you to love them. 
they will dominate your heart and I need your heart. I remember the Lord says, I the Lord, I'm the one who searches their heart. Because your devotion fills with your heart and makes your heart to be one with his heart. Let's take this man lose his cell phone. There's no more connection of what he knows. People People that that he's connected to, whatever he has, he lost his car. God wanted this man to live with him as if there's nothing that he has. I don't know if you're hearing me. Because even when this man dies, he won't be buried with anything here. He won't be buried with anything here. This car case, your brother or someone or your wife will carry them. Die now, you will see. You will see. This cell phone, you are going to, your enemy, the person who doesn't love will use this cell phone. All these things does not make you better. Your life will be better. Your life will be better. Your life will be better. Better. I don't know if you hear it. All these things does not make you better. Without them or you have them, you must have a devotion with God. As if you never had them. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? God bless you. Let's read Colossians 3. Maybe we read from verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. It says, Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on earth, yes. which have only temporal value. For you died to the world, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Today, Amen. Maybe, maybe when you reach home, you must also think about what is the meaning of death. Think about it. The Bible says you died to this world. If you have died to this world, how are you supposed to live in this world? How are you supposed to live in this world? You have died. Otherwise, there's nothing in this world that can separate you with this world. You have died in this world. You know, sometimes if you go to graveyard, you go there, you, you find other people standing on other people's graves. They died. And those who are the inside the grave, they don't say anything. They say, hey, why are you on top of my grave? You died. But Christians, the way they comment, you are not dead. The past is still hunting. The Holy Spirit has filled you. But you are still connected with the things of the world. I pray that from today, don't allow anything to affect your communication. I don't know if you're hearing me. You have died in this world. 